Hello, everybody. We'll get started with the webinar at this time. Uh, give me a quick OK before we get going in the chat box if you're hearing me clearly and seeing my screen all right. Okay, great. Looks like we're uh, good to go. Uh, I just got started just on time. Usually I've got the screen up five or 10 minutes early. I had a bit of a technical problem. I had to restart my system, uh, but we got started right on time. So uh, at least we've got that on our side. Uh, as you see from the heading here, we're gonna focus on some technical analysis. There's some tremendous movements today. Uh, Somebody's typed, Leslie, you, you can't see the screen. Is that what you're saying? Type OK if you're seeing my screen all right. Yeah, Leslie, it's just you. So if you're hearing me, I, obviously you're hearing me because you're answering back. Uh, you got to adjust something in your setup. Everyone else is seeing the screen just fine. OK. Uh, all right. So uh, I, as I was saying, there's some nice movements today. I'll show you the driving story that's behind the movement, uh, creating a good deal of predictability. Uh, first, let's go through our, our standard steps here as we're getting started. Uh, keep in mind that what we cover uh, is meant to be educational in nature, uh, not, not to be taken as uh, some sort of official financial advisement or anything like that. Uh, but what we're looking to do is add uh, some, some knowledge, some information to your tool belt, so to speak, so that you can either begin developing or improve upon uh, a strategy that you've already been developing uh, to hopefully go after better profits. Uh, no matter what level of profit you've been experiencing, there's always room for improvement. Uh, obviously, there's no guarantee of profits on any one move. And as this risk warning is stating, uh, trading Forex, CFC, spread betting and options entails risk. Uh, you can read the full risk, risk disclosure statement on Abitrade's uh, main website, uh, but obviously also there's a great potential for profit beyond the risk, which is why we're here. We'll look at different ways of managing your risk, uh, potential ways of doing that, and uh, ideas and strategies for taking profits, uh, for taking potential profits as well. So uh, as we get going, understand technical analysis, there are two main types of technical analysis, and we'll use both. Uh, from time to time, we, we tend to lean more on manual methods of technical analysis rather than the use of indicators. Uh, manual methods of technical analysis would be, uh, in general, drawing your own lines on the charts, looking for your own price levels, your own trend lines. Uh, it gives you a lot more flexibility than an indicator would give you. It also allows you to adjust to current market conditions and fundamental news that you can look at just in advance of, of making potential moves. And indicators obviously can't take into account a tweet that just came out or some breaking headline on Bloomberg or something like that, that, that the indicator couldn't possibly know. So indicators do have their uses. They help you know maybe in general when things are overbought or overturned or swinging in one direction or another. Uh, manual methods uh, tend to be uh, more reliable and useful when adjusting to what's happening here and now with the fundamental news along with your technical analysis. So we'll lean more heavily towards that. On occasion, we will add an indicator or two. Uh, in general, if, you, if you're brand new to things, technical analysis is basically looking at the candlestick charts, uh, looking at the historical movements, uh, looking for patterns, predictable uh, movements, and trying to take advantage of that. Uh, so with that said, let's go ahead. Let's take a look at what's happening in the news first. Uh, fundamentally, and, and it doesn't matter what main news website I go to, the top headline, it seems to be the same, okay? Markets hope for positive signs from Trump trade speech. So there's going to be a trade speech today from uh, President Trump in the US. And I think we all understand probably by now, and if you don't, there's been a lot of back and forth between the US and China trying to get a trade deal uh, every time there's positive momentum with that, the markets tend to pick up, uh, bringing maybe oil with it. Uh, the safe havens tend to drop gold and, you know, the, the other safe havens like, like the Japanese yen or Swiss franc tend to go down when there's good news about these negotiations. And right now, what's the momentum? Which way is the wind blowing today? Markets hope for positive signs. 
This is what we see, okay? So when we see the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, if you're trading on oil or trading on gold, you kind of get a feel for what direction you might expect based on this type of headline, okay? And if we check, okay, maybe that's just one website, right? No. Stocks, U.S. futures edge higher as Trump trade speech awaited. Again, they're already telling you the futures are going higher. The futures market's climbing. Guess what we trade on? Uh, on a lot of these assets, the futures market, okay? Uh, anything that has a contract rollover, these are futures markets. Uh, we're talking S&P 500, Dow Jones, NASDAQ. Uh, these things are, are, are moving. And as the markets open, the futures market sometimes get a, gets a, a push with that extra momentum as well. So uh, it's something to keep in mind. It seems like positive momentum for the markets. And look, look at the futures down here. What color do you see? Green, 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 green for the futures. And that's what we're trading on, again, on the indices, on the platform. So uh, dollar is strengthening. We can see it's in the green. Uh, uh, we've got the S&P 500, NASDAQ, Dow, all in the green. Okay? So that's something to keep in mind. And as, as we see uh, economic announcements as well, what's been happening today, kind of mixed. We've had some, some bad numbers in red come out, worse than expected for the Great Britain pound, earnings numbers. We've also had better than expected employment numbers, okay, a little bit mixed. Unemployment rate actually dropped uh, in the UK, and so that was good news, mixed with some bad news. So in general, not a huge effect when you've got mixed news like that. Uh, same for the euro, a bad number here, uh, and, a, and a couple good numbers here maybe more positive than negative here, and a few more good numbers. Small business uh, numbers coming in out of the U.S. positive, uh, and so, and then some other numbers coming up later today. So in general, nothing that stands out in the economic announcement schedule that shows, hey, great news or, hey, horrible news. Looks kind of mixed, maybe leaning more towards positive than negative. That pulled with the positive hope uh, on this potential trade deal that, that uh, everyone seems to believe is coming up, uh, that kind of starts to tell us which way the wind is blowing. Okay, uh, so let's go to my demo account. Let's take a look at what's happening. Uh, right now, here's crude oil. Crude oil keeps trying to push up today. Uh, we see a resistance level here. Resistance back down, resistance back down. Resistance, it just started to break back down again. These are 15 minute candles, okay? So this is through the day today. It tested this resistance level already today. One, two, three, like four times, okay? Why does it keep going up testing the resistance? Why would oil be trying to climb to that? What's it, what's it reacting to? Does oil climb with good news for the economy or bad news? Okay, I've got some of you saying, yeah, the oil tends to climb with good economic news. Uh, and so the, the positive momentum that we just looked at, that they're talking about in those articles regarding the US-China trade negotiations and, and that the futures market is in the green and looking to open higher, uh, what, what we're seeing here is uh, positive momentum then for oil because what's good for the economy typically then is good for demand for oil, right? And if the two most major economies in the world, China and the US can reach a trade deal, and if that's good for both of their economies, then that's why that might push oil up. If you believe that there's going to be good news when Trump speaks today, if he's gonna try and upplay the trade deal, maybe self-fulfilling to make himself look good and also maybe because it's true, right? Maybe he's going to come out and say positive things. Hey, we've got a deal. It looks very good. If that happens, what do you think might happen to this resistance level here with the oil? What's the potential movement if Trump's speech today is good news? Breakthrough. Okay, I, I agree. Some of you are saying breakthrough uh, or, or a, a bullish candle. So what kind of pending order can you prepare up here? You, that way you don't have to sit and wait for the news to leak out. If the news leaks out, say, hey, they've got a deal, phase one. If that happens, 
What kind of pending order can you have waiting right up here for the breakthrough? Yeah, buy stops, okay? I'm not saying put a buy stop just because there's a resistance level. What we're saying is, boy, the news is leaning towards a positive open when not just the futures market, but when the actual U.S. market opens, they're, they're leaning towards green. And, and if that's what happens, and that green momentum starts to lift the market, and on top of that, if Trump ha has this speech and said some positive things, there's large potential for a climb here for oil. There's no guarantee, obviously, but nobody's here about guarantee. To, to trade with guarantees. We're here to trade on potential. And so if that breaks through this resistance, where's the next major resistance level? Got a small one here, but the, the actual next major resistance level is up here on the one hour candle. So that's up at like 57.8. That would be almost, what, uh, not almost, it's about 50 cents climb. 50 cents climb if it breaks through right here. So you could be looking if you're scalping to get in just above 57.3 and get out just below 57.8. So about 50 cents climb. And, and anyone who has any experience with trading oil, 50 cents climb can be quite profitable. What do you make with 50 cents climb if you have one lot? If you have one lot on oil, what do you make? Yeah, a thousand barrels in one lot. That means a thousand dollars for every dollar climb. So if it climbs 50 cents, voila, exactly, 500. So while that looks like a small movement and only a 50 cent potential climb to that next resistance level, if you've got enough in your account and you want to take a trade size of like one full lot, you could make 500 on a breakthrough here that climbs somewhere near that next resistance level and take your profit as a scalp. Uh, I'm not here to tell you you should trade one lot, you can trade one tenth of a lot, you can trade micro lots, uh, but my point is small movements can pay well. And so uh, how much would you have to risk? Where would my stop loss be on this breakthrough if I get in on a buy stop up here? If, my, if I'm getting in up here on a breakthrough, where would my stop loss be? Just, just below the support, right? That might make sense. So only have to risk maybe 20 cents to make potential 40 cent profit. Risking uh, one lot position, 250 to make 500 in that example. If I'm you know, going down 20 cents, up 40 cents, or down 25 cents and potential climb 50 cents. And, and strategically answering if it breaks through to confirm an uptrend. Right, so this is combining technical analysis with what we know is happening in the market. Now, what if you're more patient and you're not scalping? Okay, let's look at the four hour candle. Let's look at the one day candle. The higher resistance level is up here, right? We're not talking just a breakthrough and getting out at these wicks. If there's enough momentum, and there very well could be enough momentum to not just go 50 cents to this first resistance level, if there's a true breakthrough and it breaks that 50 cents, look at the potential that oil has to climb. It wasn't that long ago, oil was up here around 62. Okay, we only have to go back, what was the date here? We only have to go back to uh, September 17th. Okay, less than two months ago, oil was up at 62, US oil. Okay, so you actually could have a huge potential climb and you don't need to take profit 50 cents up. Depends on your style of trading, right? To take profit scalping, and then you could be patient. If it breaks through here, you could have another buy stop. You could do both, right? Don't have to do one. Uh, or you could do a partial close if it gets up to this level and leave the rest open to see if it breaks through the next level. So you have some options there if you're feeling bullish with oil today. Uh, Type okay if you're with me on that or, or questions or comments if you have any. Yeah, it, exactly, Chris. I, the fact that it already established a higher ceiling when there was positive momentum from US-China negotiations a while back, 
it already established the ability to go all the way up to 60 or so. Uh, so, you know, if you like the idea, if you get in on a breakthrough, if you like the idea of staying in longer, certainly you can do that. I'm not here to tell you when you should get in or out of a position. Uh, just showing the potential and the history. It, it certainly, it, it reached uh, not that long ago, even on the one hour candles, uh, up near 58. And then when we go to the one day candles, we see well above 60, 61, 62, uh, not that far back, okay? So you've got some potential moves for scalping. You've got some potential moves for longer term moves, okay? Uh, hopefully you understand why did oil plummet down way down to 50 a while back? You know, if we go back a few months because of fear about the, the trade war, because of fear about a slowing economy, partially due to the trade war, uh, fear about oversupply of oil because of these things as well. And so now if you eliminate some of those factors for fear, that creates the potential for a correction back up. And that's what we already saw. This hitting 62 was a correction back up as the fear disappeared. There was a little bickering, oil came back down. Now it seems like they're gonna have a deal, oil's going back up. It's already done that. So uh, you, you make the decision what you think will happen, but it makes sense to combine your technical entry points with what you believe is happening fundamentally in the market. What do you think we're gonna see if we pull up gold? If oil's climbing, what do you think gold's doing? Yeah, listen, uh, the fundamentals tell the story, right? As we then look at our technicals, look at that. These are one day candles. You know when this slide started? This one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight day slide on gold. You know when that started? Yeah, last week when the word first came out that a hey, phase one deal between US and China just about reached. As soon as you saw that article, you could have started selling on gold, right? Then if you combined your technical analysis skills, you could have said, whoa, resistance level, resistance, 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 resistance. Why would we not have traded on a breakthrough? Why, why, why would we not have been trying to do a buy stop here? Because the fundamental news was good news in the markets, which tends to drive gold down. So if you combine the fundamental news with your technical analysis, whereby you might be preparing for a breakthrough on oil up, with gold, you certainly wouldn't have been eight days ago when good news was coming about, out about US and China, okay? So you can see technical analysis is great. Along with fundamental news, it's even better. You would have known to trade down from the resistance if you saw the good news. You would have known put my stop loss above the resistance because look, US, China have some kind of great trade deal maybe. So you, you then trust the resistance level more to trade down off the resistance rather than to trade up on a breakthrough. Okay, you, you find which way you think the wind is blowing and then you use your technical analysis to trade in the right direction that you deem more likely to occur. Okay, so uh, obviously this resistance level held, 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 held uh, for gold because gold was ready to drop because of the good news for the market, okay? Uh, if you were doing breakthrough moves, let's go to smaller candles, one hour candles. Look, look at this uh, downtrend. Maybe we need to go to four hour, the downtrend's so large, okay? You could have put a, a support level here, okay? If you, didn't, if you didn't get in the trade down from the resistance up here, if you were too late, you saw it drop, you could have said, wow, it's on a support level. Why would you not trade up off the support level? Why did this movement here die? And why was it predictable that it would die? Fundamental news, right? Fundamental news, which way was the wind blowing? Wind was blowing, good news for the market. Why trade up off the support if there's good news for the market? What pending order would you prepare if you feel that gold has a reason to drop rather than go up, where would you, if, if you were back in time here, as this was approaching the support, and you say, man, I missed that big movement. What pending order do you prepare? Yeah, sell stop below the support. You prepare it here. 
you avoid trading up off the support if you think gold has reason to drop, right? It'll, why trade against what you think? Wait, wait for the breakthrough for confirmation. And are breakthrough candles usually bigger or smaller than the typical candle? What I'm asking is if the support level gets broken, does it usually just get broken by a little or does it blow by it? Yeah, bigger than usual, blows by it. Okay, not always, but many times. Look at this breakthrough candle. Look at this. Okay, you could have had your pending order below the support level, support, 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 and you're just waiting for it to come back down, knowing, hey, still good news in the headlines for US trade deal. You got your buy stop down here, just in case it wants to bounce, you don't get in early. And as soon as that breakthrough candle hits, boom, you trigger yourself stop, and you're immediately in the money, immediately, okay? Now that's a textbook way of, of, of a breakthrough candle occurring. It doesn't always occur that perfect, but many times it does, right? And if your stop loss is just back above the support, X distance, and your potential profit is 10 times X, you only need to be right one out of every two or three times and you're still in profit. Okay, it's trading with potential. Which way was the potential more? To go with the news, the hey, good news for US-China trade negotiations or to just trade technical analysis and trade against the news? To trade the bounce. Well, look how big the bounce was and look how big the movement was after the breakthrough. It answers our question, right? Both were good technical analysis entry points, trading up off the support that was established many times in the past as support or trading down on the breakthrough. They both make sense. And when both of them make sense technical analysis wise, then you need to decide, do I wanna do both or do I prefer one over the other? And in this case, there was such strong news about these negotiations going well, it made sense maybe to lean towards one over the other, okay? You still could have profited, by the way, if you'd have done both. You could have done a buy limit, pending order, above the support, seeing that, hey, it held one, two, three times, four times. And so as it came down, you could have bought, you could have scalped the profit, or if it dropped and you lost, okay, no big deal. Stop loss below the support, and then your sell stop kicks in, and you make a heck of a lot more than you lost on the, on the buy limit, okay? Uh, it, it's okay to trade that way. You can take a shot at both directions, uh, but if it was me, I would have been scalping quicker on a bounce off the support and more patient on the breakthrough because the fundamental news dictates that in my mind, okay? So it's okay to expect a bounce. Even when the news is pulling gold down, a lot of times when you hit a major support level like this one, you'll get a bounce. You still get a bounce up. It just won't last as long as the breakthrough in this case because the news was in favor of dropping, not rising. So combination, technical analysis, entry points. You can win on short scalps, even against the market. You can win even bigger on breakthroughs with the market. Type okay if you're with me on that. Or questions. All right. Uh, let's take a look then at some other assets. What's happening uh, with some of the indices? Because they're certainly being affected with what's happening today. And by the way, let, let's talk about, well, what can you do now? Right? It's all well and good to say, oh, I should have done this. I should have done that. What's happening right now? Why did this stop dropping right here? Does anyone see? You should be able to see it in the picture. Why did this red candle stop dropping and consolidate sideways. You see, here's the consolidation. It was dropping, and all of a sudden, after this steep drop stopped, and now it's going sideways. Okay, five-minute candles going sideways. Why is that? Let's go back to the four-hour candles. Why did this sharp drop stop where it did? Four-hour candles, one day, oops, one day candle. Take a look to the left. What do we see? I'll draw the line. You see this resistance level right here? Boom. I'll draw a double line to make it easier to see. Okay. Right here. 
You see, this was resistance. Resistance, breakthrough candle. There's that larger candle than the rest, breakthrough. This took momentum to break through. It's going to take momentum to break back below. Old resistance level here becomes support level here. It's not a coincidence that this drop stops right at this same breakthrough level. What you, was resistance, breakthrough, now becomes support, okay? And so as this was plummeting, it's natural and predictable that it slowed right at this level. It doesn't mean it won't break through, but it slowed right at that level, okay? It's not just uh, by, by chance that it consolidated on the five minute candles and it's going sideways right now. It's reacting to this old resistance level that becomes support, okay? What might you do if you expect really good news today? What way will gold go? What do you think? If Trump has his speech and says, we've got a deal, great news, we're even move, moving forward on a second phase two deal, if, if, if that type of news comes out today, what do you think happens to this support level right here? Yeah, it'll probably break the support. So what's the potential for dropping with good news today? It's sitting on the support level. It's waiting for a reason to break it or to bounce back up. It's waiting for a reason. It takes real market news typically to break a support level. When it broke the resistance and went up, trust me, there was some kind of bad news on the market. That's why it broke through. And that's why gold rose like that on this day. What's it gonna take to break back through? And if it does, it could have a candle the size of this one. That would mean it could drop down to here. The same type of news, only the reverse news, good news would make it break that support. If, if the news is as good today as this news was bad on that day, then you could get a similar size candle in the opposite direction as it breaks through the other way. Doesn't mean for sure it'll happen, but the potential is there. We see it on the chart when it went the opposite direction. So a self stop below this support level somewhere, maybe 1445, you pick your number. I'm not here to tell you your exact entry point. Uh, you have a pending order waiting as a self stop far enough down that you know it broke the support, that it's not a false movement. Then you put your stop loss back above the support or a hedge trade. If you prefer to trade with hedge trade, uh, If bad news comes out, if they say, hey, negotiations are off, we can't reach a deal, boy, this could bounce right back up to these high points up here off the support, right? So you could have a pending order. Uh, if we zoom back in, you could have a pending order up here and say, if it breaks above this resistance level or this resistance level that you'll buy, it's gotta be high enough so that you don't get a false signal, right? You could have a pending buy stop up above the resistance and a pending sell stop down below the resistance or what we're calling support right now in case it breaks down. Good point, Alex. You can prepare for both directions. Absolutely. I tend to think it'll be good news, but you never know. And you're right. You shouldn't try and guess the market. Don't try and be right. I always say this. Don't try and be right. Be smart. And trying to be right is, oh, I'm only going to prepare a sell stop. Trying to be smart is, I'm going to prepare above the resistance level in case it breaks up, and I'm going to prepare below the support level in case it breaks down. And yeah, you're right, Trump can be unpredictable. Exactly right. So uh, preparing above a strong enough resistance in case it breaks up, you could catch a huge upward movement. And preparing below the support in case it breaks down, you could catch a huge downward movement. It's obvious that this is sitting on the support waiting for a reason to go one direction or another. There's a potential huge movement to occur today. So uh, very simple setup, sell stop below this support, buy stop somewhere above the smaller candles resistances, maybe above this resistance up here. If it gets back up to, I don't know, 1468 or something, maybe you're, you're in on a buy, okay? I'm not here to tell you it should be 1468, by the way. You, you pick your entry point where you're con convinced it must be bad news if it's going up for a buy stop or low enough that you're convinced it must have been good news for a sell. 
How do you how do you determine the direction? You see this here? You see here, high point got lower, high point got lower, high point got lower, high point got lower, high point got lower. You see that? That's a downtrend. Low point got lower, low point got lower, low point got lower, low point got lower. That's a downtrend. Lower high points, lower low points. At the downtrend. But what happened in the last several hours, the last 12 or 14 hours? Okay. The market is pinching. The low points are getting higher and the high points are getting lower. The market's being squeezed. It's got to break one way or the other soon. There is no uptrend right now, there is no downtrend. It's going sideways. It's being pinched. The market lowering the high point, raising the low point. That's, that's a market that's tightening, 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 waiting to break out one way or another. So that's how you determine the direction, the trend. Okay. Can Donnie tell me if that answers your question? If you, if, if you need me to elaborate more, I will. Good question, by the way. So, uh, to determine what's the what's the trend now, zoom in on the smaller candle, okay? Uh, to determine the bigger picture, use the larger candles. Like here's a one day candle. Gosh, that looks bad with all the lines I drew now. Let's get rid of some or all of them. Okay, there goes a, a clear a clear perspective. So. It, it's pretty easy to see here on the one day candle. Old resistance became new support. And you see it's trying to break it now. The wicks are just below. It's just, it wants a reason to, to keep going. You can see that. And like uh, I think it was Alex said, you can prepare in case it breaks some of the smaller resistance levels, you can prepare buy stops to go up and down. okay? Uh, okay, Alex, let's let's go back to the one hour candle. You see you see how you have peaks and valleys. Okay? Peak, valley, peak, valley, peak, valley. Okay? Downtrends and uptrends tend to have peaks and valleys. Peak, valley, peak, valley. That's high point, low point. High point, low point. You can see it on one hour candles, you can see it on one day candles. Right, you can see it on all time frames, which is interesting. The same trending occurs on one month candles that you see on one one minute candle. Okay, there are trends within the trend. Uh, and so, when you can start to draw a parallel line like this, these two lines are parallel to each other. That becomes quite predictable. When it hits the low end, you can trade up. When it hits the high end, you can trade down. When it's low end, you trade up. When it works its way to the high end, you trade down. Low end, trade up, okay? So we had higher high, that, I mean lower high point from here to here, lower high point from here to here, lower high point, lower high point, and then it flattened out. It stopped getting lower. Lower low point, lower low point, lower low point, lower low point, and then it flattened out. It stopped getting lower. So the downtrend ended, and it's not a coincidence. We talked about that before. Why did the downtrend choose to end right here? What was special about this spot? Why, if you were already selling, would you have known take your profit as it gets near here? Because this is the old support level, the old resistance level that got broke through. And you can see it, it stopped dropping this time here, and it did the same thing again, okay? So that helps you get an idea of technical analysis wise, if you were already selling that you might have taken your profit just before that support. And then you'd be waiting to get back in on a sell only if it breaks the support, right? And if it bounces up off the support, you could be getting in on a buy. All right, so reasons to get in of trade, into trades, you also should know when you're going to get out of the trade. And a lot of times on a sell, you're getting out of the trade just before the major support level. And now you're waiting for confirmation. Do you want to get in again? And this, this really looks like it's trying to break the support. 
When we're on one day candles, it looks like it even almost broke it a little bit. I tend to have a rule for myself. You see that this here is a wick. This is a wick. If it breaks into the base of the color of the candle, okay, right there, okay, this is wick. If it breaks into the base of this color, now I believe it truly broke the support. Okay, now I feel it's not a false signal. So when there are wicks, I tend to go more with the base of the candle to determine whether I'm fully convinced of a breakthrough. Okay, you don't have to use that rule. I'm not telling you that's the only way to do it, but that's one way to say, okay, how do I know when it really broke the support and it's not a false movement? Sometimes if you use that rule that you have to get past the wick and get to the base of the candle, that makes it a little bit further past the breakthrough and you're a little more confident that this is truly a down, downtrend. Yeah, it means it's a stronger signal. Exactly. It means it's a stronger signal. It doesn't guarantee that it will keep going, but it, it uh, certainly means it's a stronger signal. Okay, so, uh, and you might say, but I'm not going to profit for that next $10. This distance on a one day candle is quite large and you have to get that out of your head because if you're willing to wait and eliminate the false signals and if that improves the times that you're right and you get in without the false signal, look at the potential drop that's still there. Look, look at the potential drop that's still there even if you get in after it gets through this wick distance. There's still a huge potential before the next support level. The next major support is like down here, all the way down to 1402, 1403, right? So uh, a lot to work with there, a lot of potential. All right, so what do you think's happening with the yen if gold has been dropping? What do you think something like the USD looks like against the yen over these days? If gold is weakening, yen is a safe haven, it's likely been weakening. So if you want to diversify a bit, you could trade on the USD against the yen, right? So uh, what do you think happens to this resistance level if there's good news today? Resistance, predictably after this climb, it pauses at the resistance, just like gold trying to break through Resistance here, whereas gold was trying to break through the support, same idea. If there's good news from Trump, what do you think the USD does against the yen? Okay. It's obvious what might happen, right? And, and the potential just to this high point right here, a recent high point. That's from 109.35 up to 110.72. That's like 120 something points, 120, 130 points potential climb before it gets to the next major resistance level on the one day candle. So if this breaks through, it's the opposite direction of gold because the yen is paired second against the USD here. Okay, so that's a potential. What's the potential if there's bad news today? Then the resistance might hold. And you got a huge potential drop here before you get to the next support level, which I see here. Okay, so uh, if you want to get in on a market sell here, and if, it, if there's good news and it breaks through, you have a stop loss here and you get in on a buy, that's okay. It's up to each trader uh, what you see fit to do. I tend to want to wait wait for the confirmation that goes with the news that I'm expecting, right? If you expect bad news, then maybe you sell here. If you expect good news, maybe you wait for a breakthrough on a buy stop. Uh, if you're completely unsure, you can do both and still profit. And I think we've covered enough here and, and really the major driver is this news for US, China and the Trump speech. Uh, I would keep an eye on these. You could set up some pending orders in the direction that you think is most likely to occur. Uh, get yourself going. You could even do market moves if you think it's already established the trend. Uh, type any questions you might have, comments before we end things here.
Okay, everybody. Thank you guys for joining. I uh, appreciate the uh, the attendance and the participation with the questions and the and the insight that some of you give. The comments are very helpful. Uh, and listen, uh, we have another webinar tomorrow. Come back. We'll take a look at what happened. Come back tomorrow. Uh, we'll look at you know did this UFC JPY have a big movement when Trump spoke? Did gold have a big movement? Did oil have a big movement? And we'll look and say if you'd have prepared some of these pending orders or done some of these market moves with stop losses on either side of the support and resistance and uh, trading on the break, potential breakthroughs, we'll take a look and see what, what you would have made. And actually, hopefully, we're looking tomorrow at what you did make rather than what you would have made. Okay? Don't be afraid to take some shots if you believe in them. Okay, thank you for attending, and uh, hopefully I'll see you tomorrow. All right, bye for now. Thank you.